So you want to buy a new gaming monitor and you're not too sure which one you want to go for. Maybe you are sure of what resolution and refresh rate you want, but not quite sure which model is kind of best for you. In this video, we're going to be covering basically just that. Some recommendations from monitors that I have used and from some that I haven't, but have heard some pretty good things about and everything in between. Now, I should mention that the prices that I'm quoting here are from the UK at the time of filming and they will vary depending on when and where you watch this. So if you want to see pricing local to you and when you watch it, take a look at the links in the description down below for any of the monitors that you want to check out and see what they're like for you and kind of make your own decision from there. Now, unlike the last kind of what to buy guide with GPUs. This video is actually going to be broken up by the monitor's resolution and refresh rate rather than price, although there will be a couple of different priced options in each category, or at least for some of the categories that are a bit more hotly contested. So let's jump into it. So let's start off with what I consider kind of the minimum if you're going to be buying a new monitor, and that is 1080p 60Hz. Now, if you're planning on getting the cheapest monitor possible, then you can go with a TN option, which is generally a cheaper panel, but also uh, a little bit less uh, good for, for viewing angles and color reproduction. But generally speaking, if you're gonna get 1080p 60 hertz, then I generally recommend picking up an IPS panel like this Acer one. This is the R241Y and it's about 100 pounds. It's an IPS monitor and looks to be a pretty decent show. It's not one that I've had in personally, so do feel free to take a look at all uh, other reviews of these monitors as I go through them, especially if I haven't had them in myself. But overall, it looks to be an interesting show. There is also another Another contender in this category, a sort of upgraded version of a model that I looked at a long time ago now, which is the BenQ GL2580H. Now there is the HM version which has speakers built in, but the H version has HDMI and is a bit more of a gaming centered monitor, and especially if you're console gaming, this might actually be a very nice shout for you. Going a little bit more up market, we have the 1080p 144Hz monitors. These are really the sweet spot for most gaming cards at the moment, anything from from a 1050 Ti on sort of low to medium settings, all the way up to an RTX 26 or even sometimes 2070 uh, when you're getting into to that kind of you know higher settings, but still 1080p 144 hertz. This is a really nice category and it's something that I used for a number of years before upgrading to a 1440p 144 hertz monitor. So I do highly recommend this for gaming. And the monitor that I recommend here is the AOC G2590. Now there's actually two models of this. There's the FX and the PX. The FX is the cheaper version, which is around about £200 at the time of filming, and is essentially just the same monitor, it's the same panel, but it's missing a USB hub and a fully adjustable stand. Otherwise, the FX is obviously the one with the USB hub and the fully adjustable stand, but is a little bit more at £230. Now, moving a little bit further up in price, we have the 1440p 60Hz displays. Now, don't get me wrong, you can pick up cheap versions of these if you fancy, and feel free to show around in any of these categories, but relatively speaking, if you're looking for a gaming monitor, then a pretty good show is the Acer Nitro VG2700U. It's about £250, it's still 60 hertz, but is rather fast in its response time and looks to be a pretty nice show and has free sync as well. And moving even further up in the gaming totem pole is the 1440p 144Hz monitors. Then we actually have three options here. We have the cheapest option available, which is actually all right. We have a reasonable option and then we have the IPS option. So starting off with the cheapest one, the, the one that I'm recommending here is the Element Gaming 27 inch 1440p 144Hz monitor. It's one that I've checked out recently and they've just uh, released a revised version which has a vase amount and should be a little bit better for you. Uh, there should be different versions of these worldwide. So while you may not find a specific Element Gaming one in say the USA, you will find very similar ones available for hopefully similar prices. And if you don't want to spend 230 to 250 pounds on a 1440p 144Hz monitor and you want maybe a little bit better quality or a few extra features like G-Sync, then the ASUS PG278QR is a very nice option. Now it is pretty expensive at just shy of 600 pounds, but it, as I said, does give you full actual G-Sync support. And while G-Sync is now supported on many FreeSync monitors and many Adaptive Sync monitors, it is nice to have that dedicated 
automated support uh, supported feature if you do fancy that and of course you get a little bit better build quality a little bit better um, actual image quality in some cases and color reproduction so if you're interested in that that is also a good option and finally in this category we have the IPS option now this one is a bit of an interesting category there are a number of contenders in this category but the one that I'm actually recommending is the one that I did a review on fairly recently which is the Gigabyte AD27 QD it's actually about the same price as the TN ROG Swift the PG278 QR so that's always good to see still is actually a FreeSync monitor but is soon to be G-Sync compatible so that's also nice and you get a IPS panel with actually really nice color accuracy and while it does have a few flaws and you can check out my review of it if you fancy it's still a pretty good monitor and especially for this price compared to the PG278 QR it's actually a pretty nice shout too and of course we have to talk about 4k we're obviously going to start off with 4k at 60 hertz and for this one I highly recommend the LG 27UD 68P they seem to have rebranded it especially in the UK to the 27UK 600 uh, but that's selling for just shy of 400 pounds and is an excellent monitor with beautiful colors and great viewing angles it's also great for gaming and I think you'll have a fantastic time with it especially if you're planning on doing anything that isn't you know just gaming if you're planning on say doing video editing or photo editing alongside gaming as well I think that will be a great shout and finally we have to talk about the newest category of all which is 4k 144 Hertz now this is a ludicrously expensive category more than double the price in fact almost four times the price of the highest price monitor I've already talked about and the one that I'm recommending here is essentially a bit of a, a placeholder because essentially they are all the same monitor they're all using the same panel at this point in time uh, but the one that I've had my hands on the one that I've actually tested is the Asus PG27UQ it is 2100 pounds it has G-Sync it's IPS it's it's beautiful, it has HDR and it is 4K 144 hours and it's absolutely insane. Now with that said, I would love to hear your recommendations for these categories in the comments down below. Of course, I'm only recommending the ones that I've either had experience with or look like they're the best option. So if you do have a suggestion for something that's maybe better than any of these in these categories, I would love to hear your thoughts. As I mentioned at the start, if you want to check out any of the monitors and especially if you want to see pricing when and where you watch this, take a look at the links in the description description down below. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis with live streams on Thursday nights then of course hit that subscribe button for more videos then. You can also check out the other videos over there and you can check out the links in the description down below. There's Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links which don't cost you anything to use but massively help me out when you do use them so thank you for you guys. You can also check out Patreon if you want to support me directly and get cool rewards for doing so or check out the merch link if you want hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other other designs too. You can also check out Private Internet Access which is a great and cheap VPN and Humble Bundle which is a great way to get cheap games and support charities too. As I mentioned you can check out the other videos over there. If you've got any questions leave those in the comments down below. Otherwise thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next video.